So welcome back to another episode, and as you can see, I'm not at home, I'm at my sister's place, and next week I'm going down to uh, too many games, but I just watched the Microsoft conference and I had to make a video, I had to talk about it because I was absolutely blown away. This is probably one of the best Microsoft conferences I have seen in years, honestly. So. Why? I, I've written all my little notes down here that I wanted to talk about because there's so much stuff. Let's start with the first one. Halo 5 Guardians. What do I think about that? I thought the graphics were pretty good. I thought it's, a, you know, obviously it's another Halo. It's Halo 5. Uh, it looked good. I The multiplayer aspects looked pretty okay as well. I, I wasn't... You know, like, to be honest with you, I wasn't blown away with Halo as much as I thought I would be. It was just another next-generation Halo, and it looked good. But the multiplayer stuff looked excellent. I think it was the Warzone multiplayer looked really, really good. So, that's that was pretty good. That was a great way to start it off. The next game they announced fucked me up big time. It said Keiji Nifune, and I'm like, what, what the hell is going on here? And it just showed a, a girl in some desert uh, with some robots and, you know, in a sandstorm, there's a lot of shit going on, but just as kind of a movie. But I'm like, what the fuck is this? And what was the name of the game? Recor. Recor. I'm like, that kind of shocked me. I didn't know Keiji Nifune was working with Microsoft on a brand new game. I thought it was all about Mighty Number no. 9, so that came out of left field. Okay, here's the big one I wanted to talk about. This is the one that... Honestly, I got a small tear. I did. I got a small tear. <laughs> because I have a huge Xbox 360 collection. I collected most games on the Xbox 360 uh, last generation. And they announced on the Xbox One backwards compatibility. What a huge thing that was. I, I was watching it and I'm like, oh my god. Because you know how it was when they announced all the new consoles. They're like, yeah, they're not backwards compatible. And you're like... Well, you know, for me, I have to have a, an Xbox 360, an Xbox One, a PS4, a PS3 to play all the games I like to play in the last few years. And it's, it takes up a lot of space and it's a big pain in the ass. A lot of times where backwards compatibility, I can just grab an old game and they were showing Mass Effect playing on it using a lot of the Xbox One capabilities. Wow. Bravo. Finally. That was a big move. For Microsoft, I'm really happy they've gone that direction. It shows that they know they've made some mistakes in the past, uh, and I think they're trying to rectify them now. I think they're really trying to fix them, and I'm I'm applauding them for it. I'm I'm absolutely always <laughs> on the the band of good ideas, and it's a great idea for backwards compatibility. So wonderful. The next thing was the Elite Microsoft controller, and what was unique about it? I wish I had a controller to show you guys, but you can move pieces of it. You can move the D-pad over. You can move the analog pieces over. It was real. The shoulder buttons over. It was weird stuff. I saw it briefly, but I'm like, okay. I, it was at first. I'm like, oh, another controller. But like when I saw that you could move the pieces around, I'll I'll have to check up on that later. But it really looked interesting. So they showed Fallout 4, which I was expecting. It looked great. I was I was happy with it. I know there's a lot of people that are like, oh shit, the graphics don't look that good. But I I thought they were totally fine. The big bomb they dropped, which was incredible. Mods. Mods that are done in PC, that have been done on PC for years and are incredible and, you know, us console guys are always so jealous of the PC guys, obviously. But you can get mods for Fallout 4 on the Xbox One now and that opens up a huge thing like we've never had before. If you're a console only player, that's a cool kind of thing that you can do. So fucking awesome. Okay, I saw a lot of tweets after the, con the conference about this. Uh, EA Access, where you can pay $5 a month, get access to games before anybody else, and have uh, you know access to a bunch of uh, backlog titles and things like that. I, I wasn't that moved by that. I was like, oh, I can just pay five bucks extra on top of everything else. So nobody was really happy about that. I think if you want to play some games early, it's a great feature for you, but for me, I was like, okay, just show me some games. That's all I really want to see. I want to, you know, yeah. Forza 6, look good. Look better than Forza 5. Let's move on. I called it as soon as I saw that it all went dark. I'm like, Dark Souls 3. And they showed a little bit of that. They showed a, a cinematic of that. It looked really cool, but not much else other than that, but still cool to see. Lots of great indie titles. Too many to list right now to go through, but all of the ones that ones they were showing, I was like, this, this, this looks really, these look really, really good. I, I can't wait to spend a little bit more time later on and go through them because they kind of flash them at you so fast. But the one that stood out, 
all of them were really good, but the one that really stood out, Cuphead. Wow, I, I mean, like, I saw that one and it was like the most exciting indie game I've seen in a long time. It's a kind of a side view action shooting game in a 1930s cartoon environment, if you want to call it that. It's, it's so fantastic, it's so fresh, it's so new of a concept, and I, I again, applaud brand new ideas, ones that are moving things forward, and I thought that was, that was really innovative. It was really imaginative, and definitely one that I'll be picking up, playing co-op uh, with a friend with, because it looks really, really cool. I, you gotta see it to, to, to believe it. It's, it looks excellent. So they showed Rise of the Tomb Raider, exclusive to Xbox One. What did I think about that? It, it started off with a, a lot of quick time events of climbing an ice-covered mountain. But holy shit, did it ever look awesome. I, I love the original Tomb Raider. I thought it was awesome. Uh, it blew me away. I got it on the, P, uh, the PS4 at the time. Uh, I will definitely be picking up... I, I like Honestly, when I looked at Tomb Raider, the new one here, I was like, everybody's got to play this game. It looked fucking unbelievable. The action, the environments, I mean really showing uh, a lot of what next generation can do and it looked like a lot of fun. Rare showed Rare Replay, which was the older games collected into one volume, an actual standalone game uh, of all the old Rare titles and I was like, cool, I, I love physical copies, so I was like, oh good, it's not a download only uh, type of experience, so that was cool, I was really happy to see that. And the next thing that blew me away was the new Rare title, Sea of Thieves. and. It's a pirate adventure game, swashbuckling game, uh, you know, like where you're fighting monsters and skeletons and other ships and going for treasure. I can tell you something, it captured my imagination when I saw this and the graphics like blew me away. I was like, I cannot wait to play this. It was just like classic rare awesomeness, really fresh concept. I didn't see this coming. A, a pirate type of style of game and they really look like they've got it right. It looks like a lot of fun and it really looked unbelievable. Like a really cool brand new Goonies adventure that I can't wait to go on. They showed a bit of Fable Legends. I really couldn't make my mind up about it because it was kind of brief. It looked kind of nice though. It didn't look like Fable. Okay, we get to another point of the conference that blew my mind. The HoloLens. I didn't even know about this thing. It's like a device that you put around your eyes and it creates a holographic display in front of you. A little like the Nintendo 3DS does, where they were showing Minecraft and they were showing Minecraft uh, on a table. So the table was there, you put the glasses on and you like, you know, map to table type of thing. And your entire Minecraft world mapped out on the table and you could move it in real time. And my, my imagination just went exploded looking at this concept and I thought oh my god this this is something that could really move things forward in to do with every bit of technology in the world this is the kind of thing where you'd be in a conference room and everybody would put on these glasses and you could show th uh, holographic displays of brand new graphs or whatever you know what I mean but it's it was like, almost like a technology that was cool that they were using it for Minecraft and it looked awesome but the possibilities of this technology, I think that was the most exciting thing about it, was the possibilities of what you could do with it. And they weren't even talking about any of the possibilities. It was all going on in my mind. I'm like, wow, the things that you could do with this technology would be incredible. And I really hope it catches on. I really hope they go forward with it. And we see some really cool innovations from it. I got my wish on, on, on a couple of games. Gears of War, they mentioned Gears of War Ultimate Edition. I was like, oh, okay, we're getting a remake of Gears of War, the first one, which is cool. I, I'm a big fan of the original Gears of War. It's one of my favorites is, is the first one. Uh, it was the first one obviously like, I played, but I had a lot of good memories playing it. So I was like, okay, you're gonna remake that game in high definition. That's great, I, I look forward to that. But then all of a sudden they're like, oh, there's something else we wanna show you. And they showed a next generation Gears of War game that looked fantastic. It, it, it lived up to all my expectations. It really did. Gears 4, obviously. Wow, did it ever look fucking fantastic. I can't tell you how great it looked. And that was the conference. That was everything they mentioned. They mentioned a few, quite a few other games as well. I couldn't mention everything. I tried to mention the highlight mo moments to me. I was writing notes going, oh my God, like I couldn't believe it. Uh, things I wanted to talk about because it was really exciting. But one of the best Microsoft conferences 
in years. And the reason why is they mentioned games. And they mentioned a lot of games. And the games that they mentioned were fantastic. They were really good. They displayed the games. They displayed the technology. There, was a, there wasn't a lot of hoopla of other bullshit about televisions and crap like that. It was all about video games and video gamers. And uh, yeah, I honestly... I haven't been holding things you know, against Microsoft, but this was a really fantastic conference with them. It put them back on direction uh, with gamers, I really thought. like, Because I know they've lost a lot of gamers over the last few years with their, you know, like, you can't play, you know, backwards compatibility. All that wasn't there, and they've changed all that around. And I thought, I, I applaud this conference. I really do. I absolutely enjoyed watching it. I wasn't bored. It was fantastic. What did you guys think of the Microsoft conference? Were you as enthusiastic as I was about it? I really thought they showed a lot of great stuff. But tell me down below what you thought of the conference overall. And I apologize for my background, but hey, you got to do what you got to do at times. And it was all about talking about the Microsoft conference and how how, how I was so impressed with it. I thought it was excellent. So anyways, guys, until next time.